Hello there, it talks to you, the Bible of soccer, not soccer. And in this video we want to talk about Germany and their problems in the context of the Confederation Cup uh, Russia 2017 and about how beautiful this war looks like. Okay, I remind you that I'm going here with no guidelines, no teleprompter, no master edition, recording everything from my cell phone and I speak like this, a little bit slow so I can connect one idea with the next one uh, without making long uh, periods of uh, pauses. Okay, also I remind you that uh, English is not my first language, English is not my second language, and let's start with this. Okay, so we want to talk about Germany. Which one is the best player of Germany? Okay, in the current team. Difficult to say. Okay, there are, they have uh, Manuel Neuer, they have Otzil, and they have Moller. Okay, I will say any of those three can be the best player, but uh, for me, uh, Moller is the best player and we're going to be talking about him later on. So I'm going to start with Manuel Neuer and with uh, Ter Stegen. They both have a similar style of playing. Okay, Manuel Neuer, he usually tries to go very far from his area and try to cut whatever thread, whichever thread is coming, is generating, okay? Sometimes he has crossed the other side of the field to do this, but he also can do it around here, okay? He uh, is very good uh, and he's very confident in making safe. He has good reaction. Okay, we can see that he he's very tall as well. But uh, this good save also talks uh, about his very poor sense of location. Okay, he is not the kind of goalkeeper that he's gonna position himself in a good place and try to anticipate where the shoot is gonna go. Okay, but this is also because uh, he is very confident that, he's going to be, that he can make a good save. Okay, but I will say that uh, sense of location is one of his uh, low parts, low attributes. And the other thing, style, the other characteristic is that he's gonna go try to be the first attacker and try to start the plane with his foot, okay? But I think his play with his foot is a little bit overrated. He's not as good as this, as Claudio Bravo. Okay. Then we have Ter Stegen. He has a very similar style uh, with Neuer, maybe with Neuer, maybe in a lower level. That's why he is the. That's why he's in the bench, and he goes out as well. Maybe not as far as uh, Manuel Neuer. He has good save. He also, I think he has a not so good uh, sense of location, but he has a problem. Ter Stegen, he has a problem. He, uh, sometimes he gets focused out of the game, okay? From time to time, I make uh, very bad mistakes, okay? That cost their team one goal or really uh, bad situations. Okay, so this is the other thing. I, I always say that I, from every four matches, he made a mistake. Okay, maybe it's not like that, but that's my way of saying this situation. Okay, so now we have here, uh, the name of this video is Germany and their, their problems. This is the first problem. The first problem is Philip Lam. Okay, Philip, Philip Lam is retired and the coach is trying to play with the same system, but he has now different players. So Emre Can, he plays here, but he move it and he make him to play here. Emre Can, uh, he has very good two attributes. One of them is defensive, okay? He's very good at coming from behind the players and taking the ball in a clean way, okay, from behind. And his other very good attribute in attacking, when he moves in attacking, he do luxury passes 
that can uh, put the team in a situation of advantage. So what's the problem? When you move a player from here with this characteristic, with these attributes, from here to here, now you're killing this player because now he cannot try to come from behind and take the ball because it can end with a penalty or it can create a misunderstanding with the referee. Okay? So he still can do it, but he's not gonna be he's gonna be aware of that situation. He's gonna he's not gonna be as best as he can do it here. Okay, also outside he can create a free kick that can be dangerous for his team. Okay, and in the other side, when he goes attacking, it's not the same making a luxury passes here where if you risk this move and you lose the ball, your team and maybe yourself have the chance to recover. If you try to look a luxury, make a luxury pass here to put your uh, team in advantage, you also are risking, okay, that something can go ground. And if you make a mistake in this area, you're gonna have a very dangerous counter-attack that where maybe you cannot recover. Okay, so that's the difference. That's why Emre Khan, when you move him from here to here, he doesn't play the same. Okay, the other, the, the only good thing that remains is that he's very good at uh, translating the ball, the ball from uh, in moving forward. Let's say like that. Okay, even if he has some plays from the other team, he's very good. Okay, and he make it look very easy. He make it look very easy. Then we have Rodiger here, but also I uh, can play Skimmich, Boateng. We're gonna be hardest. We wanna be talking about those players later on, but I'm gonna go with this first eleven. Okay, I'm gonna go with this eleven first. <clears throat> okay, uh, Rodiger. He has a very good long pass on target. Okay. Very good. And his defensive attribute, his best defensive attribute is that he can cut and anticipate okay, some passes as well as the goalkeeper. And he also has a very good vision of the game and he can do very good uh, short passes when he, they recover the ball. Okay. <clears throat> then we have Hommels. Hommels, he also has a very good long distance passes okay on target so we have two central back that can surprise the other team with a very long pass on target okay he uh, has uh, his best attribute uh, in defensive is that he always focuses in the ball he doesn't focus in the player he focuses in the ball and he always going to try to attack the ball directly okay Okay, the other thing that he does, he also is good coming from behind sometimes, okay, especially when the uh, when he has to go out of his position, okay, he's very good at coming from behind as well as Emre Khan, okay, but Emre Khan is better than him on doing that, okay, I'm just mentioning it. And the other thing that he has, Hummels, when he has the ball, he always wait until somebody from the other team get very, very close to him to give the ball away. Okay, that way he, uh, they can continue generating this situation with, without having to worry uh, about one less player, let's say like this. He just get away of this player, get rid of him. Okay, then we have a Jonas Hector. Jonas Hector, his best attribute, uh, defensive and in attack, is that he makes very good decisions uh, in a very short time. He's a quick thinker and he almost all the time makes the right decision in a very quick time. He's very good uh, making crosses passes from free kicks. Okay, maybe not and trying to score in, but making cross passes, he's uh, good on that. Okay, and the other thing is that he's not as good as Emre Khan by translating the ball, by moving forward, but 
uh, he's very good at taking advantage of small spaces, okay, where he can move to the small space and take advantage of that and then give the ball away. Okay, then we have Kedira. Kedira is a defensive midfielder. He can place there, he can place there or here. Okay, and his best uh, defensive attribute is that he is the pressure. Okay, he goes pressuring you and he takes the ball from you. He's very good at do, um, uh, doing this. This is why he plays uh, in a very great team, in a great team, in a very good team. Because when he gets very close to you, the best thing you can do is give the ball away because the chances that you're going to lose the ball are very high. Okay, because he is very good at this. And he also is very good at making passes, okay, making assistance. So somebody else can score. Okay, and he has a very good uh, control of the ball when he has it. Okay, the only low point about Kedira, about Kedira is that he is not, he hasn't, he doesn't have very good definition. Okay, I know, I'm aware that he has scored a very great, uh, great goals but he fails a lot okay for a player of this level or his level he should be better on this then we have tony cross tony cross is the uh, other problem cross is the other problem of this team okay cross is not as good as he's used to be he's good at, at uh, changing okay the ball from one side to another with very good precision, without sending the ball away or without giving it to a defender. Okay, also from here to here, he has a very good precision from behind and in the other side of the field, which is more difficult to do because it's, there are more defenders. Okay, when you do it here, maybe it's easier, but when you do it here, it's really hard. But uh, the reason why cross stays playing in a very good team is because of the corner kicks okay he kicks excellent corners okay he kicks excellent corners so Sergio Ramos can come and score he's excellent at that okay that's why he stay playing in a very good team and uh, <clears throat> the other thing that he has is assistance very good passes but I think this is the area where he is uh, not as good as before. His passes are not the same as they used to be. Okay, he is not able to generate the spaces that he used to do before. Okay, this is a very big problem for Germany. Then we have uh, Osil. Okay, Osil, he plays there. He is the one who is going to generate okay situations he's very talented okay he's an organizer and he also can do the same as tony cross that he can change uh, from side to side but in in his club he does this a lot but in the national team he can leave that responsibility to cross and he can worry just about organizing and generating situations okay then we have a uh, Reus, okay, Reus, he has a very good free kick, okay, and he has a very good definition inside the box where he can put the ball inside the net and he can direction the ball anywhere he wants. He can put the ball where he put the eye, let's say like this. Then we have Muller, okay, Muller is very good at breaking the offside boundary okay he's very good at this he also has a very particular way of kicking the penalty kicks kicking the penalties that is he's gonna go very fast and then he's gonna go very slow and he usually wait until the goalkeeper moves okay so muller but why i say in the beginning that muller is the best player of this team because he's a tactical player it's very hard to stop him he always gonna position it 
himself, he's gonna position himself in the dead point of the fenders. Okay? In the dead point of the fenders. So that way this defender is gonna say, oh, he's not my responsibility. This one is gonna say, no, he's not my responsibility. He's gonna say, no, it's not my responsibility. This one is gonna say, no, it's not my responsibility. So he's very good at positioning himself in the dead point, and then he's gonna move to the next dead point. Okay, so that way he's always gonna be in a dead point or one of his teammates is gonna be in a dead point. For this reason is why uh, Germany um, scored seven goals against Brazil in the World Cup because Thomas Muller did this, okay? In five out of the seven goals, Thomas Muller did this successfully. So that's why he's a very hard to, to stop player and he's very good on this. at this. He's very, uh, he's like a tactical player. Maybe you will then say that he's very talented, okay? That he can do a lot of things, luxuries or stuff like that, but He's very tactical player and very smart. Okay, and it's very hard to stop. Then we have Gomez, that he's been playing lately for Germany. Uh, but uh, before they have uh, Gotze, the one who scored in the final match of the World Cup. But Mario Gotze now has some health, healthy problems. And he's not playing anymore. We don't know if he's gonna come back. Okay, so Gomez is a very tall player. And he is the other problem of Germany, or this position is the other problem of Germany because Gomez, he's very tall, but he's very bad with aerial game, okay? He's very, hard, very bad with uh, head shots, okay? But he's very good inside the box because he can kick the ball with the left foot and with the right foot, okay? And he is very... Uh, he has a very good direction and sense of where he can put the ball, okay? He's very comfortable, he feels comfortable in moving in this direction because he can score with either foot. He also is very good at organizing from behind. This complements uh, Thomas Muller, okay? Because he can take advantage, he can help Muller on this tactical situation he has this a little bit of this sometimes when he come back and position himself there and try to build help Ozil and help the team build any situations uh, to try to score okay what is the problem okay there is another problem the problem is the bench is also the problem because they have Kimmich for example Kimmich is very similar to Philip Lamp, okay, but he's not so talented, okay. Emre Kang is not similar to Philip Lamp, but Kimmich he is. But the problem with Kimmich, the main problem, among others, is that when he gets here, his cross passes as are not so good, and on top of that, he has somebody with, uh, somebody who has not so not so good aerial game even when he's very tall so this become a problem in the dynamics okay so he's very similar to philip lamb but even like that and Cam is better in this position than him so that's why uh Emre Cam usually goes as a starter then we have boaten boaten also have very long passes on target so you can keep that on the system okay he's very fast so he can come here and come back real quick he has very good uh kick from outside the box okay where he can score oh i lose the ball and um he also have very good aerial especially in the defensive aspect aspect but he can also come and try to score okay but ten is this um is this a uh, player that his brother plays for an African nation and I think they can even play uh, against each other. He also have a very good elasticity 
to save from some situation, okay? He's not really an acrobatic player, but he has very good elasticity. Okay, then we have uh, Draxler. Draxler is a very technical uh, player, okay? He has very good technique, even though he's not very talented, but sometimes he can kick from the outside of the box and he has a, a little bit of a cross pass. Uh, in a few times, okay? He can place, come from the bench, Osil can be moved, Muller can be moved, okay? Somebody else can be taken out. It's depend of what the coach you want to do that day. And they also have a uh, Hoedes who can place there as a central back as well. Okay, so these are the problems of Germany, but in reality, their problem is the coach and this coach has been in the national team for so long. He's trying to keep uh, the same system, but maybe they need another coach that maybe doesn't play with uh, exactly a central striker, maybe somebody coming from behind or trying to find young players to uh, give them the opportunity, okay? So this is all. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You can share it and you can subscribe, but remember that this is mainly a Spanish speaking uh, YouTube channel. However, I have a playlist that starts with ENG for English uh, and I have all of uh, my English videos in this playlist. Okay, so say goodbye to you, the Bible of soccer, not soccer, and thank you very much.